Ladies and gentlemen, I am Senior Master Sergeant Alfred Montez, and I will be your narrator for this event. On behalf of Colonel Amy Tolles, Deputy Director of Air Operations and Strategic Programs, Fourth Air Force, it is my pleasure to welcome you on this very special occasion. During today's ceremony, you will be given cues to stand and be seated at appropriate times. As a reminder, military members in uniform stand at attention while all, while all others place their right hand over their heart during the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Blue Eagles Total Force Honor Guard, the singing of the national anthem by Captain Blair Parker, and the invocation offered by Chaplain, Chaplain Amy Hunt. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave.
please join me for prayer. God of creation, we thank you for this day. And we thank you for the women and the men who work hard to achieve the Air Force mission. And this afternoon, we pause to recognize, honor, and celebrate the retirement of one of our own, Lieutenant Colonel Bridingham. His work has taken him hard hours. He's worked extra hours. He's had a lot of teamwork and a lot of trials. We thank you, God, for his dedication to the Air Force and all the men and women he has worked with. It is now time for change for him. Retirement comes with reflection, reflecting on memories, reflecting on deployments, and it comes with a reflection of the experience and the journey we have been on. We thank him right now for his leadership and his friendship. He may be retiring from the Air Force, but he will always be an airman and a friend to all. Amen. Thank you, Blue Eagles Honor Guard, Captain Blair Parker, and Chaplain Hunt. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <clears throat> Before we proceed any further, I'm pleased to recognize some very special guests joining us today. Please hold your applause until all guests have been introduced, beginning with Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham's wife, Jessie, and their sons, Brennan and Parker. Father Ralph Brittingham and Mother Melanie, Sister Anissa, Anissa Shlamo, Father-in-law John Brennan, Mother-in-law Julie Elliott, sisters-in-law Jenny Mason, Mariah Bibian, and Laura Cast Castaneda. <clears throat> Among our distinguished guests in, in attendance, we are pleased, also pleased to welcome from Fourth Air Force Command Chief Master Sergeant Trevon Dennis, Director of Staff Colonel Lee Merkel, Director of Logistics, Engineering, and Force Protection Colonel Daniel Counts, Staff, Staff Judge Advocate Colonel James Goodwin. We'd also like to welcome former 452nd Operations Group Commander Colonel retired Charles Asuma, and Chief Master Sergeant retired Deborah McGuan. We also welcome all commanders, deputy commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, family members, special friends, and the members of Fourth Air Force and the 452nd Air Mobility Wing joining us today. Thank you for sharing in this special occasion. Today you will witness a time-honored tradition of a retirement ceremony, a celebration and recognition of the distinguished, distinguished career and accomplishments of Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Andrew Brittingham, culminating 17 years of faithful and honorable service to his country and the United States Air Force. At this time, we invite Colonel Amy Tollis to come forward and say a few words. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to stand before you today and speak about the career of a remarkable officer and individual, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas A. Brittingham. Known to most of us as Brit, others as Tommy B, and to a select few as Lidl, which means lead from the left, a call sign based mostly on facts when he inadvertently took the lead during an F-16 formation landing at Kelly Field, Texas. Born in Salisbury, Maryland originally and raised in the heart of Valparaiso, Florida, Thomas's journey has been one of dedication, resilience, and an unwavering commitment to pursue his dreams of flying and service to this great country. Thomas's story is one that's full of ambition. Not many people outside of Britt's family know that at, he was a very skilled musician at a young age. And in fact, his first job was with the Northwest Florida Symphony Orchestra as a bassoonist where he also performed in concert with the London Symphony Orchestra. However, Britt, in his true fashion, decided that a career choice in the symphony was too sedentary of a lifestyle for him. And so he began the process of applying to the service academies. He was accepted to all four US military academies, which is cr quite the rare occurrence for you that may not know. He was accepted to the Air Force Academy, the Naval Academy, West Point, and the US Coast Guard Academy. His dream was starting to materialize. He either wanted to command the skies 
or the seas. Early on, however, medical disqualification from the pilot track due to eyesight cast a shadow on the flying side, and so Thomas chose the Coast Guard Academy, the quickest path to command in a high-paced and challenging environment. It is indeed fitting that the ceremony today is here in the Navy Drill Hall with the signal flags posted on the walls. While he was a cadet at the Coast Guard, Britt's pursuit of adventure resulted in his selection to an exchange program at the Air Force Academy. There, he soloed in gliders, completed the jump program, started his scuba certification, and participated in boxing as well. During this program, he learned that the Air Force had recently relaxed their vision requirements. And so for a second time, he obtained another rare congr congressional nomination to attend the Air Force Academy. Once the application reached the superintendent level, however, at the academy, they blocked it due to concerns of using taxpayer dollars to add on an additional four years to his education. So Britt continued and graduated with high honors in 2006 with a bachelor's of science in mechanical engineering. Upon graduation, Britt decided to pursue a challenging buoy tender assignment, a mix of law enforcement, salvage, diving, search and rescue, and international engagement that included training of foreign navies across the Western Pacific region. During his first assignment with the Coast Guard aboard the Cutter Sequoia in Apra Harbor, Guam, he made history conducting the first bilateral boardings of foreign ships in the Western Pacific. Britt also logged over 100 military dives, demonstrating his commitment to duty and excellence in every one of his career pursuits. In 2008, he took command of the Coast Guard Cutter Haddock here in San Diego, California. Here, he led successful search and rescue counter narcotics operations, including the seizure of 5,000 pounds of marijuana off the coast of Mexico. His leadership in these missions was nothing short of exemplary. Command of a boat at the young age of 24 years old, touting no injuries or loss of life to crew members during his command. At this point, Thomas may have thought his destiny was a lifelong commitment to the Coast Guard. However, when he learned that there was yet a third path to wings in the Air Force Reserves, he applied again to pilot training and was accepted barely with 45 days lacking where he would have been ineligible after that point. In 2011, he was selected to attend Air Force pilot training with the 47th Fighter Squadron at Barksdale Air Force Base, an A-10 unit. While attending Euro-NATO joint pilot training in 2013, known as NJEP, Thomas's squadron was decommissioned. Ultimately, he ended up after being selected for a pilot slot here at March Air Reserve Base in 2015 with the 336 Air Refueling Squadron, the KC-135 tanker, where he served in numerous roles to include executive officer, flight commander, instructor, evaluator pilot, and ultimately chief pilot. His leadership and professionalism were again recognized in 2022 when he was appointed Deputy Division Chief Standards and Evaluations at 4th Air Force, overseeing the Flight Standards Program of 18 subordinate flying wings. Remarkably, during his career, Britt has served as a flight lead and mission commander for Mediterranean, Atlantic, Pacific Region contingency report operations for oceanic formation crossings of KC-10, KC-135, F-16, and A-10 aircraft. He is a senior pilot with more than 2,500 flight hours combined in the T-6, T-38, F-16, and KC-135. He's deployed in support of Operation Inherent Resolve four times, amassing over 980 combat hours. During his deployments, his leadership and mentorship of fellow air crew members was so profound, in fact, that they coined the term WWTBD. What would Tom Brittingham do as an unofficial part in their decision-making process? He also coined the term RMA, which was worn on morale patches by the air crews to remind them to always go to the fight with the right mental attitude. Throughout his career, Thomas has been a distinguished graduate in all of his academic pursuits as well. These include attending the Expeditionary Warfare School at the Marine Corps University in San Diego, Squadron Officer School, 
and completing his master's program in military operational arts and science from Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, where he received the Air University E-School of Graduate PME's 2021 Joint Warfighting Award for his master's thesis. This award is given to the one student that provides the best investigation into planning or execution of military service in joint air, space, and cyberspace operations. Britt's paper was selectively selected from 272 students who completed the research elective suite that year. What drives a man to achieve so much in his life? Thomas's inspiration comes from those closest to him, his family. His mother, Melanie, a retired nurse who still engages in CrossFit, boxing, tennis, and pickleball, is a testament to resilience and strength in their family. It is clear where Thomas got his love of physical fitness and his competitive drive. He himself is quite the accomplished triathlete and was in fact a collegiate level tennis player at the Coast Guard Academy. He also has completed the challenging Murph Memorial Competition with his wife, Jessie, on numerous occasions. His father, Tom, a re retired Coast Guardsman, also set the example of duty and honor for his son, regularly regaling him with stories about the good and bad command experiences of his career. Detailing these qualities to Tom as a youngster about the keys to command success set Thomas up for success in his own future roles in both the Coast Guard and the Air Force. His sister Anissa, a Navy corpsman herself, serves as another beacon of dedication to service in their family. And of course, Thomas's most successful sources of strength and inspiration come from his immediate family. Brennan and Parker fill his life with joy and pride. At only four years old, Brennan already shows signs of his father's adventurous spirit. While Parker, a natural born climber, gymnast, and dancer, brings even more boundless energy into their lives. Thomas's wife, Jessie, is the rock and foundation of the family, the glue that binds them together, and the strongest person that Britt says he has ever met or had the pleasure of knowing. Both their, before both the kids were born, you may know that they often went skydiving together. Britt recently told me how he had given Jesse a fair family heirloom ring for their engagement. And so since he didn't have to come out of any money to invest in that ring personally, he later sealed the deal with an engagement rig for skydiving. The last time I was at their home, I asked them what they did on a rare date night having two young kids at home. They both kind of laughed and looked at each other and then told me how they strangely enjoy watching cops episodes on television. <laughs> Perhaps this indulgence in reality television somehow balances out the extremely intellectual side of Brit, which I have come to know fairly well over the last few months. We regularly nerd out, nerd out and have long conversations about research articles and experimental treatment programs for ALS. Thomas's greatest accomplishments, however, are not in the awards or accolades he's received in his military career, but in the care for those under his command. He takes immense pride in knowing that no one under his watch was ever hurt or killed. He said his proudest military moment was a Coast Guard mission where they found a lone survivor who had been adrift at sea for weeks, a testament to his commitment to life and duty to others. As a commander, Thomas believes in a simple yet powerful philosophy. Focus on the people first, the equipment, and the mission. He has learned that the most important word a leader can say when protecting those who serve for him is no. One of his first commanding officers instilled this value in him. He told him, your job as an officer is to recognize the things that are most important, namely those that will get people killed or injured, as well as taking care of your people. If you ensure those two things are squared away first and foremost, you'll be successful. I asked him if he could impart one piece of wisdom to those preparing for command, what it would be. He said, are you willing to sacrifice your career to protect the people who serve you? For Britt, the answer was clear. His journey has been one of selflessness, courage, and an unwavering dedication. Britt's friends, family, mentors, including his wife, Jessie, parents Tom and Melanie, Jesse's parents Julie and her father John, are all joining us today to celebrate his duty and commitment to service of our country. Thank you all for being here today to honor Thomas and his remarkable military career. 
Thomas, your story truly inspires all of us. Thank you for your service, your leadership, and showing us the true meaning of duty and honor. May we all strive to embody the excellence that you have achieved in your career. We are proud to stand here by your side today. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Tolis. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the Meritorious Service Medal and remain standing for the reading of the retirement order. The order. Attention to orders. To all who shall see these present greeting, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas A. Brittingham distinguished, distinguished himself in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Deputy Division Chief, Standards and Evaluations, 4th Air Force, March Air Reserve Base, California, from 4 April 2022 to 28 September 2024. In this important assignment, Colonel Brittingham's outstanding leadership and devotion to duty were instrumental factors in the resolution of many problems of major importance to the United States Air Force. He was, he was critical in discovering training and emergency checklist noncompliance after KC-135 autopilot modifications and resulted in him re rewriting the autopilot guidance for Air Mobility Command, benefiting 31 total force units. He coordinated with the Air Mobility Command Standardization Division on the Electronic Quick Reaction Handbook and Checklist, preventing erroneous application installs on 3,000 electronic devices. Finally, he aligned Air Force Material Command certifications, airworthiness and flight standards personnel to reserve structure, fostering a cohesive team focused on safety and operations. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham culminate in a distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Colonel Tallis will now officially retire Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham. Order. Attention to orders. By order of the Secretary of the Air Force, Special Order Number 005492, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Brittingham is relieved from duty as the Deputy Division Chief, St Chief Standards and Evaluations, 4th Air Force, March Air Reserve Base, California, and is retired from the United States Air Force Reserve, effective 28 September 2024, for Air Force Instruction 363203 in the rank of Lieutenant Colonel by order of the Secretary of the Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <clears throat> Colonel Tullis will now present Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham with the retirement certificate. Certificate of Retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America to all who shall see these present greeting. This is to certify that Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Andrew Brittingham, having served faithfully and honorably, was retired from the United States Air Force Reserve on the 28th day of September 2024. Signed, Chief Air Force Reserve John P. Healy, Lieutenant General, United States Air Force, and Chief of Staff David W. Alvin, General, United States Air Force. We will now present Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham with the United States flag. Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham, on behalf of 4th Air Force and the 452nd Air Mobility Wing, we present this flag in recognition of your service. On August 21st, 2024, this flag was flown on board a 336 Air Refueling Squadron KC-135 Stratotanker, RATS-61. On July 28, 2024, it flew on American Airlines Flight 1412 and 2635. On September 5, 2024, it was flown on a 144th Fighter Wing F-16, Surf 01. 
Additionally, these colors were posted over March Air Reserve Base on September 9th, 2024. Colonel Tullis will now present Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham with a certificate of appreciation from the President of the United States. For service in the armed forces of the United States of America, I extend to you my personal thanks and the sincere appreciation of a grateful nation for your honorable service to our country. You have helped maintain the security of the nation during a critical time in its history with a devotion to duty and a spirit of sacrifice in keeping with the proud traditions of military service. Those who follow in your footsteps will draw inspiration from your commitment, dedication, and sacrifices made to ensure the protection of our American freedoms. Signed, Joe Biden, Commander-in-Chief. At this time, we invite Jesse Brittingham to come forward for some special presentations. Jesse will now place the retirement pin on Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham. The United States Air Force retirement lapel pin is appreciatively authorized to Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Brittingham, having distinguished himself by honorable service from 17 May 2006 to 28 September 2024. The emblem will be worn as a badge of honor, indicative of honor and faithful service while a career member of the United States Air Force. In the early 1970s, the Air Force Chief of Staff, having recognized the enormous contributions of spouses to the success of their military members' careers, initiated a certificate of appreciation that publicly acknowledges their support. Colonel Amy Tullis will now recognize Mrs. Brittingham for her personal contributions. Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Air Force. In grateful appreciation, the United States Air Force presents this certificate of recognition to Jesse Brittingham for the commitment and numerous contributions that made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for the support which gave strength and purpose to your spouse's service. Given this 28th day of September 2024, signed Chief Air Force Reserve John P. Healy, Lieutenant General, United States Air Force, and Chief of Staff David W. Alvin, General, United States Air Force. Jesse, please accept these flowers in appreciation for your unwavering support and sacrifice throughout Thomas's years of service. Colonel Tullis will now present certificates of appreciation to Brennan and Parker. Brennan and Parker, with your mom's assistance, please proceed to the stage and be recognized. Come on, Brennan. We practiced this yesterday. <laughs> These certificates recognize Brennan and Parker Brittingham for the commitment and numerous contributions they've made positive impacts to the nation's defense. Thank you for all the sacrifices you have made to support your father throughout the years of his service in the Air Force and further shape the Air Force. You quietly shouldered the burden that you were not asked to carry and your dedication gave strength to your father's service in defense of our nation. 
given this 28th day of September 2024, signed Chief Air Force Reserve John P. Healy, Lieutenant General, United States Air Force, and Chief of Staff David W. Alvin, General, United States Air Force. Thank you, thank you, Jesse, Brennan, and Parker. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Andrew Brittingham, United States Air Force, retired. What's that? That's it, yeah. That was supposed to be for the end, huh? I don't know what you're going to do after this. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you, distinguished guests, Colonel Tallis, Chaplain Hunt, Captain Parker, Senior Master Sergeant Montez, Sergeant, uh, Senior Master Sergeant Shade, ceremony team, everybody who volunteered, and everyone in attendance. To the public affairs team, please, please accept my heartfelt thanks for going above and beyond to record this. ceremony so that Brennan and Parker will both have an opportunity to revisit this when they're older. Thanks to all the rats and fourth Air Force colleagues for being here. Thanks to all my friends and family who traveled from far reaches of the country to be here when they didn't have to be. It means so much that you took your time and energy to make the journey. This year has been really hard. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank all you in this room who helped Jesse and I during this time. The number of volunteers, as well as the time and effort involved, has been nothing short of incredible. Jesse and I thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything you've done for us. I'd have you all stand and recognize you individually by name, but with my slower speech and the number of you all, the Thai food in the back is going to be cold by the time I'm done. <laughs> so. Please just know how much we love you and how much we appreciate everything you've done and continue to do. Alex Honnold said, no matter the risks we take, we always consider the end to be too soon. Even though in life, more than anything else, quality should be more important than quantity. Uh, 
I always thought I'd retire from the military. I'd never imagined it'd be short of 20 years. Even so, I've had such a blessed career and two services with some of the best people in the world. Many people in this room I've known for almost a decade. During that time, I've deployed, trained, traveled, and flown with you around the world and in combat. Doing this in the service of our country has been the greatest honor and experience that cannot be matched in any other walk of life. My time here with the rats is proof that family is much deeper than blood. <laughs> If you haven't read Lou Gehrig's farewell speech, I highly recommend you read it. Just like Lou said, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. <laughs> to have two parents raise me and instill the values and work ethic that got me here today is a blessing. To have them both here today is a blessing. To have had 17 years to serve my country with my brothers and sisters in arms is a blessing. To have married the love of my life and have a successful and incredible marriage is a blessing. To have two healthy sons and the opportunity to see them grow up even for a few years is a blessing. My dad used to tell me I could be a clown for all he cared, just make sure I was the best clown I could be. <laughs> My mom always told me, go above and beyond, take the hardest classes possible, the hardest challenges, and always push myself. I'll let you discuss amongst yourself what advice you think got me here. <laughs> Something they both told me was that everything you do matters. On July 1st, 2002, when I reported to the Coast Guard Academy, there was a giant banner next to one of the entrances to the barracks that said, the journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Brennan and Parker, as easy as it is to focus solely on the destination or your ultimate goal, don't forget to revel in the journey and appreciate the process of growth and learning. I want you to be lifelong learners. I'm still learning every day. Former New Orleans Saint Steve Gleason said, ALS is a research project on pain, suffering, freedom, and contentment. And I assert that finding this freedom from pain and discontent is our ultimate human purpose. At this point, I feel like I've just completed orientation and I'm now established in the core curriculum. Part of my orientation was learning that every day we lose three veterans to ALS and diagnose three more. Since 2001, that means we've lost over 25,000 veterans to ALS. That's over three times the combat losses in Iraq and Afghanistan combined. In the Forward for 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson, you'll learn that he teaches his university somethings rarely discussed in higher education, such as the simple fact that all the ancients, from Buddha to biblical authors, knew what every slightly worn out adult knows, that life is suffering. If you're suffering or someone close to you is suffering, that's sad. But alas, it's not particularly special. We don't suffer only because politicians are dim-witted or the system is corrupt or because you and I, like almost everyone else, can legitimately describe ourselves in some way as a victim of something or someone. It's because we're born humans and we're guaranteed a good dose of suffering. Chances are, 
if you or someone you love is not suffering, they will be within five years unless you're freakishly lucky. If you truly examine the fulfilled human experience, you'll find the other thing all the ancients knew, that happiness is not the aim of life. It's working hard at something meaningful that's bigger than yourself. This can mean so many things to so many people. For the past 17 years to me, that's meant serving in uniform with many of the people in this room. For the past nine years, that's meant marrying the love of my life, being devoted to her and our family. For the past four years, that's meant raising our children. Proverbs 31, verse 10 through 12 says, who can find a virtuous wife for her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her so he will have no lack of gain. Nothing I can say here can make any of you understand or appropriately convey what my wife has been through and what she's done for me and our children. Jesse, I can't explain to you how lucky I am to have met and married you. I can't imagine life without you and stand in awe of what you do every single day and night for Parker, Brennan, and I. Your strength exceeds anything I can comprehend. I love you forever, and I'm eternally grateful for you and our family. It's incredible how things come full circle. I'm gonna share a personal story with just one example I've encountered. During my first tour in the Coast Guard aboard Carter Sequoia, we made a port call at Pearl Harbor. While on Liberty, I had the opportunity to travel to the North Shore and meet Ron Artis and his family at their Halieva home. If you don't know, Ron was a professional musician played in the 70s, 80s, and 90s with musicians such as Michael Jackson, Van Halen, and Stevie Wonder. He built a studio into one side of his house so the public could stop by any time, knock on the door, and ask for a concert. He had 11 children who all played instruments in the family band. I'm gonna read their names because they're pretty good. Stephanie, Victor, Stavon, Praise Jesus, Spirit, Thunderstorm, Martis, Kailua, America, Artis, and then the most creative, Ron II. <laughs> At the end of the performance, I bought one of their CDs. It's a blues CD, it's 10 bucks. I found a track called Gut Bucket Blues. At the beginning, Ron said, Blues got two feelings. It can remind you of the good times and the bad times equally. When you're feeling bad, it reminds you of the good times. When you're feeling good, it don't let you forget the bad times. Fast forward 17 years later, just last week, and Senior Master Sergeant Joe Parker sends me a text message. Joe, where are you at? Is Joe here? Hey. So Joe, uh, for those that don't know, Joe's a rat, fellow rat. He's also from the Gulf Coast where I grew up, in Alabama, not far from my home, I'm from Florida. But we, all, we listened to the same radio stations and pretty much did all the same stuff growing up. So his text message said, Britt, thinking about you, brother. I had a dream about you last night. We were running together through a field. When we stopped, I asked you how you were doing. You said, I have good days and I have bad days. 
You put your hands on your knees and looked up with me, look up, looked up at me with sweat dripping down your face and said, today is a good day, let's keep going. Love you, and then a prayer hands emoji. You can't have light without dark. You can't truly appreciate joy without knowing sadness. And no, you can't have good days without bad days. Brennan and Parker, the quality of your life will largely be determined by your character and work ethic, but also how you deal with adversity. and your ability to persevere through bad days and bad times. I especially want you to know that life is beautiful because of struggle and difficulty, not despite it. My goal is that my story and career will bolster the development and forging of your own character, resilience, and zest for life. I love you both so much and cannot wait to see who you become and what you accomplish. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham. Please be seated. We will now conduct the plaque building ceremony performed by Master Sergeant Sonny Madrid and Sergeant Yulia, Master Sergeant Yulia Yambasherba. For more than 200 years, the American flag has been the symbol of our nation's unity, as well as a source of pride and inspiration for millions of citizens. Born on June 14, 1777, the Second Continental Congress determined that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternating between seven red and six white, and that the Union be 13 stars, white and a blue field representing a new constellation. Between 1777 and 1960, the shape and design of the flag evolved into the flag presented before you today. The 13 horizontal stripes represent the original 13 colonies, while the stars represent the 50 states of the Union. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. Red symbolizes hard, hardiness and valor. White signifies purity and innocence. And blue represents vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Traditionally a symbol of liberty, the American flag has carried the message of freedom and inspired Americans both at home and abroad. In 1814, Francis Scott Key was so moved at seeing the stars and stripes waving after the British shelling of Baltimore's Fort McHenry that he wrote the words to the Star Spangled Banner. In 1892, the flag inspired Francis Bellamy to write the Pledge of Allegiance, our most famous flag salute and patriotic oath. In July 1969, the American flag was flown in space when Neil Armstrong planted it on the surface of the moon. Today, our flag flies on constellations of space force satellites that circle our globe. 
and on the fin flash of our aircraft in harm's way in every corner of the world. Indeed, it flies in the heart of every airman who serves our great nation. The sun never sets on our, on our U.S. Air Force nor on the flag we so proudly cherish. In 1776, no generation of Americans has been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's airmen and guardians remain committed to preserving the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we shall respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, airmen have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on lands and skies around the world. It is their responsibility, our responsibility, to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish its legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all. Long may it wave. Lieutenant Colonel Brittingham, on behalf of 4th Air Force and the 452nd Air Mobility Wing, we present this flag in recognition of your 17 years of faithful service to the United States Air Force and our great nation. On behalf of Colonel Amy Tollis and the men and women of 4th Air Force and the 452nd Air Mobility Wing, thank you for joining us to honor Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Brittingham, retired. We are proud to have served with him. It is tradition to play the Air Force song following ceremonial events to show camaraderie and our esprit de corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song followed by the departure of the official party. Please join in. You will find the words on the back of your program. Go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, zooming to meet our thunder. At them now, give them the gun. Down we dive, starting a flame from under. Off with one hell of a roar. We live in fame, we go down and fight. Hey, nothing can stop the U.S. Air Force. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. I don't gotta rap. I could sell a mill saying nothing on the track. I represent New York. I got it on my back. And just say that we lost it, so I'ma bring it back. I love the dirty, dirty, cause niggas show me love. The ladies start to bounce as soon as I hit the club. But in the Midwest, they love to take it slow. And when I hit the H, I watch them get it on the floor. And if you need it, hypey, I take it to the bay. Frisco to Sack Town, they do it a day. Cop in the Hollywood, soon as I hit LA. I'm I'm in that low low, I do it the Cali way And when I hit the shy, people say that I'm fly They love the way I dress, they like my attire They love how I move crowds from side to side They ask me how I do it and simply I reply This is why I'm 
This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. Catch me on the block. Every other day, another push, another drop. 16 bars, 24 pop, 44 song. Give me what you got. I'm in the driving car. I'm crush up off the lot. I'm in the shut the stars down just so I can shop. If you need a bird, I could get it chopped. Tell me what you need, you know I get them by the flock. I call my homie Black. Meet me on the Ave. I hit Wash Heights with the money in the bag. We in the big spin and see my pimpin' never drag. Find me with different women that you niggas never had. For those who say they know me, know I'm focused on my cream. Play, you come between, you better focus on the beam. I keep it so mean, the way you see me lean. And when I say I'm hot, my nigga, this is what I mean. Mm, this is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot cause I'm fly. You ain't cause you not. This is why. This is why. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot. Shorty see the drop. Ask me what I paid and I say yeah I paid a guap. And then I hit the switch that take away the top. So chicks around the way they call me cream of the crop. They hop in the car. I tell them all aboard. We hit the studio. They say they like how I record. I gave them black train and I did you wrong. So every time I see them man they tell me that's they song. They say I'm the bomb. They love the way the charm hanging from the neck and compliments the arm. Which Compliments the air, then comes the gear. So when I hit the room, the shorty stop and stare. They start to hate, rearrange their face. But little do they know, I keep them things by waist. Side I reply, nobody got to die. Similar to Louise, cause I got the vibe. This is why I'm hot. This is why I'm hot.
tell you everything Sit around and wonder what tomorrow will bring Maybe a diamond ring Well, it's all right Even if they say you're wrong Well, it's all right Sometimes you gotta be strong Well, it's all right As long as you got someone to lay Well, it's Somewhere down the road away At the end of the line You'll think of me and wonder where I am these days At the end of the line, of the line. Maybe somewhere down the road when somebody plays At the end of the line the Purple haze Well, it's all right Even when push comes to show about the